Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at building a GUI-based PowerShell script using free tools. Uh, so you're going to find, or at least I've found, doing the research on this, that I know of two methods to be able to do it. Uh, method one, which we're going to look at here, is using uh, Windows, the Windows Forms library out of .NET. Uh, and the other one is using Windows Process Framework, uh, WPF. Uh, so we'll look at that in a separate video. Right? So, so the first question you might ask is, why would I want to do something like this? Um, so isn't the point of PowerShell to use command line tools, create commandlets, create modules, create functions, all of that? And while all of that is good, don't get me wrong, it limits the potential usage base of who could potentially run the, the, the stuff that you're creating, the, the scripts, the tools, the functions, uh, to people who are PowerShell literate. So for instance, like, let me switch over to my lab environment here. And if we, uh, let me minimize this for a sec. Uh, if we look at this script here, this is one that I wrote in the, uh, my Build a Script series, uh, episode three, I believe. Uh, and basically what it does is it kind of automates the unlocking of a user out of Active Directory. Now, it does simplify it uh, a lot, don't get me wrong. Uh, so, you know, like I have uh, an out grid view uh, showing the locked out users, unlocking the account based on what was picked out of out grid view. Um, if a parameter was used, it goes ahead and resets the password and stuff like that. But at its heart, it's still basically a PowerShell script with functions. You need to run it at a PowerShell console, which means you're, you're running, you know, command line stuff. And not everybody in the IT world is set up with the skill set to be able to do that. And not everybody's PowerShell literate. Not everybody wants to be either. Right? So the concept of a GUI is you can write your PowerShell script, and when it's launched, it launches a graphical interface. And then you can pick text boxes, radio buttons, drop-down lists, um, uh, you name it, as potential input for what you want the user to be able to do. And that potentially makes it easier for them to be able to use it. Right? So there's quite a few different ways of making a graphical-based script. Uh, the two methods I'm going to show uh, in the next this video and, and, and an accompanying upcoming video are not by far the only ways. Uh, so a few years ago, uh, someone had pointed me at a website called PoshGUI, P-U-S-H-G-U-I which was a great free resource, but I don't know when, uh, maybe a year or two ago, they started charging for it. So it's not a lot of money. Uh, if you know all you want to do is create GUIs for PowerShell scripts, it's a great resource, uh, but again, it's not a free resource anymore. Uh, you could also find someone's um, <clears throat> form-based uh, PowerShell script using Windows Forms and kind of just modify the numbers. Uh, so you can get the rough code, change the dimensions on it. Uh, you know, basically you're you're creating a GUI just from typing in text commands. Um, I've tried it, you know, back in the day. It's not, you know, that much fun to do. Uh, so what what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use uh, the free version of Visual Studio. So it's Visual Studio Community Edition. Uh, and we're going to use a PowerShell module that someone developed out on GitHub uh, available for free uh, as the two free resources that we're going to use for uh, creating a graphical-based script. Right? So the first resource uh, is in this link right here, which is heading out to a page on Microsoft Docs site, which is installing Visual Studio 2022. Uh, so it does have the procedure for installing it. And why I linked it here is it does also have the download link for the actual Visual Studio setup. Okay, so you can pick of the different versions of Visual Studio. Uh, the one that's free is the community edition right here. So that's probably the one you want to focus on. Um, and when you're doing an install of it, uh, you can pretty much just go by the defaults. 
uh, when there, uh, when it shows the page of uh, picking different elements you want to use as part of the setup, uh, the workload page, I believe, uh, make sure you're picking the .NET desktop development because that will load uh, the Windows Forms library that you're going to need, right? Um, and so, so this will be our first link, and I will uh, throw this in the in the uh, the video description if anybody wants this link. You could also see the the URL right up here. Uh, and the second one is this PowerShell module uh, developed by uh, Laurent Darden. I apologize if I mispronounce that. Uh, and it's the convert convert form module. Right, so if you just kind of scroll down on the page here, uh, the README of it does have the instructions that you can run in a PowerShell session uh, and install this. Okay, so it's not coming out of Microsoft's PowerShell gallery, it comes out of a, a different um, PowerShell uh, repository. And this can be the second part of the free tools that we're going to be using, and you'll you'll see me use this, right? Uh, so steps are pretty basic here, setting uh, the path, uh, register PS repository. Uh, the one thing I would note is they do have commented out the installation policy trusted, so this will install itself as an untrusted repository. Uh, what that means is when you then go and do an install module, uh, from that repository, it will ask you, are you sure you want to install this? All right, so, uh, so if you want to make this a trusted repository, I'm not saying, you know, you should or you should not. Uh, if you do, just comment that line out. Uh, I'm sure say get rid, rid of that, uh, that comment symbol right here, like there. And, um, and then that would make this a trusted repository where you would not be asked to install anything from it. Uh, not what I would recommend. I usually like to leave repositories that are not ones I completely develop myself as uh, untrusted, if you will. So I do want to be warned anytime something is installing from there. All right? uh, so those are the two pieces that, that we're going to need. Uh, and both of those were done. And again, I'll put the link for this one up in the description as well. Uh, it is right off of GitHub. so. Uh, is there for anybody to be able to go <clears throat> and be able to use, right? Okay, so so with that being said, uh, the first part here of making a graphical script is obviously drawing the GUI for it. And for that, I totally like to cheat and use Visual Studio. So I can launch up Visual Studio. Um, we'll create a new project here. Uh, in the stuff that we're using. And again, I have not modified the Visual Studio here. This is just a default install. I did in this VM like probably half an hour ago. Um, so everything is defaults. Uh, so I'm going to search for uh, forms and we're going to pick this one right here, Windows Forms App uh, .NET Framework. So we're going to pick that one. Uh, we're going to need to give our form a name here. Uh, so I'm running out of my uh, my demo folder. So why don't we call this uh, YouTube demo? How about that? All right, so that'll be my project name and that'll be my solution name. So we'll go ahead and select create. And that will uh, launch up Visual Studio and drop me right in this uh, this kind of basic designer view here. Right. Now, you could customize this, don't get me wrong. Um, you could spend a lot of time setting up Visual Studio for what you like. Uh, probably one of the things that I normally change, and again, I'm not doing a lot in here. I'm just using this to draw out a form. Um, is I'll come over on the right here where you see Toolbox. Uh, if you click on that, it opens the Toolbox. It's kind of like a flyout menu. Um, and I don't really like that because if you click away, the Toolbox disappears. I normally want the toolbox to be displayed, so you can click it and then find the little pin icon right there and select that, and that will permanently display it as a docked window on the left side, right? So then you've got your form in the middle here. Uh, you've got uh, Solutions Explorer up on the, the top right, and then the properties of the individual elements that are selected on the bottom here, right? So the first thing that 
uh, we'll do here. And we're just going to make a very simple script to start with here. I, I'm going to have a, a, a text box for taking a computer name, a button, and some output uh, in another text box. Right? So it's not going to be very basic. We're just kind of walking through the steps of how to create a GUI. In upcoming videos, I'll get into more in-depth detail of making a lot more complex graphical-based scripts. All right? And I'm also open for input if anybody wants to throw something, comments, email, whatever at me about things that you might feel might, might make a nice graphical script, and maybe we can make a video about that if it's something that, uh, that I know how to do. All right? So, uh, so it's not that not that hard to make the graphical script, but if someone asks for like, you know, hey, can you do this SQL script? Well, I don't really know much about SQL, so I would be a horrible candidate for that one. All right. But anyway, so with that being said, um, let's make uh, our 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 graphical element here. Okay. So what we're gonna do um, is we're first of all gonna take the form. And notice it's called Form 1. So right now, if you kind of like just click anywhere on it, you can see the form is highlighted. You can see the resize boxes right here. Uh, so you could resize the form for what you want. Um, and then over on the right, we see the Form 1 properties here. And so if I go down here, um, I might want to alter the text. That's where it says Form 1 right here. So maybe we'll call this... Um, PowerShell uh, app, maybe, maybe just to put something in there, make it look a little fancier, and then further go down and then find name. And name, we probably don't want to call it form one, we'll probably want to call it something else. Uh, so again, maybe we'll just call this uh, PowerShell app, you know, something like that. Uh, so now the, the actual form has a name to it, right? So as I was mentioning, we're going to do something uh, pretty, pretty simple with this. So let me resize this a little more. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in uh, a text box. So I'm going to find on the left here, if you search, let uh, me kind of collapse all this stuff. Uh, so for the toolbox here, we want to look at uh, either common controls or all Windows forms. I, I kind of like common because I really don't use much more than that. Uh, again, I'm not, you know, coming in here to be a programmer or developer or whatever. I'm just looking to draw a simple GUI. And in this case, common controls probably fit the bill for that. So we'll take text box. We'll kind of drag that uh, up here somewhere. Uh, let's see. We'll also need a label. Okay, maybe put that right above the text box. Uh, button. Buttons are great because they will execute for you. So if you want it to do something, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and then finally, we'll do one more text box, and that text box will ultimately be the output. All right. Now, notice as I kind of move the elements around here, you can see that you know they kind of try to do a bit of a grid uh, to a for alignment. So you know if you're one of those people that likes to line everything up and make it look nice, uh, you know well you're welcome to do. That. Okay, so first of all, let's start to, and that, that's basically all the graphical elements I need. Now I need to, like, customize them, right? So label one probably shouldn't be called label one. Uh, so if I click it, if I come over here uh, to the right on the properties, uh, we could go down in here and maybe look at, like, the text. So, so it's label one, I want it to say computer name. And now it says computer name. Uh, let's see. So we probably also maybe want to name it. Uh, so labels, I'm not, it's not going to be called for anything, but if you wanted to put some other name on it, uh, that's how the item will be referenced ultimately in PowerShell. So whatever the name of it is, it'll create a variable in PowerShell uh, that will access that particular form element. So I'll just leave this as uh, label one to start because that works perfectly fine for them. Just maybe capitalize it to make it look nice, right? Uh, then we've got uh, the first text box here. And again, the name of that, they called it text box one. 
uh, but maybe I'll call it uh, PC PC box, something like that, because that's where they're putting the computer name in. Um, so we can name it that. And if we wanted to, we could, um, oops, property is invalid. PC box. Right. Uh, we could uh, adjust the size of it a little bit. Uh, if we wanted to make it a little uh, a little larger, uh, you could see by doing that, it's updating the, the size part right here, if you see that. Um, and if we wanted to, we could come in here. Uh, let's maybe find, uh, expand out the font and notice like the font size, if we want to make the font bigger. So maybe if I want like a 14, 14 size font, you could see it's a lot bigger. Uh, maybe drag this out a little more, uh, move the button over a little bit. All right. So you could, you could customize it based on what you want. Uh, maybe drag this over a little bit more. All right, so something like that. All right, uh, button one. Let's see, do we want to call it button one? Hmm. So if we look at the text, I certainly don't want the text to say button one. Uh, so what do I want the text to say? Maybe, uh, maybe go, you know, something like that. Execute, uh, run. You know, put some kind of action verb in there to make the button signify something. Uh, maybe resize the button, make it look a little bigger. Um, so do whatever you want there. And again, if we want the text to be a little bigger, we can come into font here. Uh, size, maybe change that to a 14. All right. So something like that. I uh, don't like that. Oh, I was on the form. I wasn't on the button. My bad. All right. So size of the button, 14. There we go. All right. I wonder why my whole form suddenly got bigger. All right. So make sure you're on the right thing. And again, if you do something you're not expecting, Control Z will um, re undo that. Uh, and then lastly here, uh, we have uh, the text, which is going to be the output. So that's... Uh, so that's going to, we're going to want to name that. Uh, so let's come in here. Um, again, go down, find uh, our name. We call it text box two, but maybe we'll call it um, output box. Uh, label it like so. And with it, um, I'm also going to uh, turn on the multi line as true because I want to resize this because this is going to be output like think of you know almost like screen output uh, if you're in a PowerShell console All right so so we want a nice multi-lined uh, text box here and this is this one happened to be called output box All right so if we um, so if we look here we can see again the name of that output box right there so if you click on your elements I usually like to kind of go through and make sure I didn't forget to name anybody. Um, so button one, I'm fine with that. Um, the That text box was called PC box, uh, the label. So we've got everything named in here, right? So at this point, uh, that's, that's the GUI. Okay? That's what it looks like. Okay, so we can come in here, uh, maybe take file, uh, save form uh, if we want to do that. All right, so we're basically saving uh, this uh, this project that we're making. All right. So now what we're uh, what we're going to need to do uh, is we're going to want to generate the actual PowerShell form. Right. So if we kind of come and look here. Um, let's see. So C demo. Uh, so YouTube demo is right here. I've got some old stuff here. Let me just clear that out. Um, so YouTube demo, and then this is where the actual project is. Um, and then there's the, the form designer .cs file right there that we're ultimately going to need. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, in a PowerShell console, um, 
we're going to utilize that. Let's see, there's still the link up here. Yeah, so we're going to utilize this this uh, uh, convert form module that I've gone ahead and installed already. So basically, I went ahead and uh, did this right here. Uh, so ran these commands to install that that module. Um, all right, so that uh, that in essence got us going there with that. All right, so from there, it's not that really not that hard to get the uh, get the actual script out of it, right? So first of all, here if we uh, do uh, if we get a module uh, list available, I should see in my program files area, right? The convert form module is there, um, and second thing. If I look at my execution policy, um, I'm not restricted from running scripts. Right? So the the module, this create form module, um, is uh, is in essence seen as a script. So you do have to make sure scripts is either you're set to um, uh, remote signed, all signed. No, all signed wouldn't work. Uh, remote signed or unrestricted or something like that. Right. Um, so now the first thing I'm going to need, uh, to kick out the PowerShell code, uh, is we're going to need, uh, the path to where the designer.cs file is. So in your Visual Studio window, if you still have it open, uh, go find in Solution Explorer here, uh, Form 1 was our project, uh, find form1.designer.cs. Uh, you could right click that and copy full path. Okay. Um, and then we'll take this into PowerShell here and maybe do like a dollar S because uh, that's going to be the source path. I can put this in uh, just doing a control V to paste it in here. Um, so now PowerShell knows where that is. All right. Um, and then the destination. Um, that doesn't really have to be much uh, if you just want to do uh, C colon demo yeah, or wherever you want to dump ultimately the finished script. Right? And then we're going to use uh, convert, uh, convert form. Okay? That's out of that uh, module that we installed. Uh, the path, which is actually the source path, I'll use that variable. Um, and then the destination. Uh, dollar D, so that's where it's going to go. Uh, we're going to do uh, the encoding parameter is ASCII, and we're going to use the force parameter. So go ahead and run that. And if I go now look at uh, C colon demo, I should see this form one here, which is based on again what my uh, uh, what my form was called in Visual Studio. Right, so if you noticed here, it was called form one, so it kicks out a form one dot uh, ps one, right, as you can see right here. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take that and open it up in a PowerShell script editor. Uh, if you wanted to use Visual Studio Code, I'm just happen to be using the PowerShell ISE because that's what came with this operating system. Um, and this is what we have, right. So now the module, again, this is not written by me. I'm, I'm grabbing this off of GitHub. Um, it does add a bit of extra stuff to the beginning and the end of the script, which I feel you don't really need. Okay? And that's just my opinion, which is probably worth absolutely nothing. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so what I do is literally I'm going to take from line one, uh, probably down to uh, uh, line, let's say, eh, if you want to leave that first comment, that's fine. So maybe down to line 22, and we're just going to delete it. All right. So get rid of that. And then uh, down at the end of this, uh, this script, uh, we're going to take uh, from line 57 uh, down to... 
uh, let's say line 72 here, and delete that. All right, and then now um, you might be wondering what this PowerShell app is. That's the name of our form. All right, um, so that was defined again when I selected this stuff in Visual Studio. Uh, so remember, in Visual Studio, uh, let me bring my uh, my form back up here. Uh, remember, I called the form uh, PowerShell app. All right. So remember the whole the whole form. That's what I gave it for a name here. If you look right here, PowerShell app. All right. So again, it uses all the names, uh, turns them into variables. So if you look here, that's the name of the form. That variable represents the form. Uh, you see output box. You see button one. You see label. Uh, you see PC box. Right. So now, for instance, like if you wanted to change maybe the label size, the, the text, um, you know, the location of it. You can see that there's different properties here that can be configured. So that's how some people uh, actually draw graphical forms for PowerShell, is they'll just, you know, throw, throw something up there um, and then just maybe play with the uh, play with the numbers, you know, until it looks nice. Uh, play with the location, play with the size, um, until they get something that they feel looks nice. All right, so if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, all right, so back to uh, what PowerShell app was here. So again, this variable represents the actual form itself, and all you really need to put on the end there um, is instead of calling the dispose method, you're going to call show dialog. Right, you're going to use that method from the form. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control S, Control S to save. Uh, if you want to go up to File Save, either way. And now, uh, first thing I probably want to check is just just make sure the form works. So bring back up maybe the console part here of my ISE, and we'll just go ahead and run the script. And notice it pops up our form. All right, looks brilliant. So type something in there. All right, perfect. Right, and we'll go ahead and close it. Now, notice though, uh, where you called the form from. Um, it did throw that cancel there, which is a bit of output from show dialog. So if you don't want to see that, you could just pipe that to uh, out and null. Um, and then if I save this, if I launch the, the script with the form, then when I close it, so notice there's the GUI again, uh, close it, it doesn't put that cancel line there. So this isn't showing any output now, right? And it's not form output, it's like diagnostic output or something. So I don't want to see that cancel on the, on the console when I launch the script per se, right? So, so there we go. So we got um, our graphical. Now we want to power it. Okay, so again, we're being real easy with this, where we'll build some more complex GUIs in later videos in this series, uh, but we're just kind of starting at, at the basics here. So typically what I do is this line right here, show dialog, that's typically the last line of the script, right? So everything that I'm gonna add in now, I'm gonna kind of put in between uh, my form elements and launching of the form. So the first thing you probably want to do is probably, we don't really need to run any logic before we hit like the button on the form, right? So what I mean by that is like, if we look at the form again, uh, basically someone has to type in a computer name, they're gonna hit go, and the way I'm gonna write the logic of this is it's just gonna ping the computer in the background. Okay, and just show the output in the text box here. Okay? So nothing really needs to be done before the button is pressed. Okay? So, so that's what we need to work on. We need to work on what's going to happen when the button gets pressed. Okay? So with that, I'm going to create a function. It's probably the easiest thing to do um, is create a function. I'll call my function ping, and then we'll open a script block here and then all the code inside of it goes with that. So the first thing is uh, we want to get whatever the computer name is. So maybe $PC 
equals, and what did we call our text box here? Uh, PC box, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take dollar PC box uh, dot text, like so. So we're gonna grab whatever the text was and assign that into this variable right here, okay? And then we're gonna do some, uh, we'll contact it. So maybe we'll do dollar $output equals, uh, and let's just do something simple. Maybe we'll just uh, go ahead and try pinging it. Uh, so let's do uh, test, test connection, uh, computer, computer name, dollar PC, and maybe we'll do a ping count of one, okay? Um, and then we'll do some output. So remember the output was literally called dollar um, output box. Okay, so maybe grab that and dollar output box dot text. Uh, equals dollar output. All right, something like that. And then we'll come in here. Uh, we'll add a click event. So what was our button called? Um, our button was called button one. So dollar button one dot add click is the name of the method. Um, and then inside of there, we're calling um, we're calling the ping method. So remember, I called the ping up here. So we're calling that, and we could save this and potentially see what we have now. So if we want to make it uh, like someone else might be running this, we could come over here. Change directory over to C colon demo. Uh, the file we made was called form one. Again, you could name it something else, but that's what we had. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. We see our graphical. Maybe put in the name of the computer, click go, um, and see what we are uh, getting for output here. So it is indeed doing something, all right? Um, we want to change this. I think the name of this computer is client two. Click go, all right? And we are uh, getting output here, all right? So the output doesn't look all that special yet. Uh, so maybe we want to take the, uh, the output here and maybe uh, cast it out as a string. Uh, something like that. All right. Uh, come back in here, close our form, relaunch it again. Something like that. And hey, that looks now a little better. Right? Not perfect, but again, this is just the initial building blocks of what we're doing here. All right. So if I really wanted to fine tune this, I could uh, trim off the, uh, the the first like blank line right here. Uh, I could use a width proportional font, so something where each character is, is as wide as the next, like uh, Courier New or something like that, um, and that would make it look nice. Uh, Lucida Console is what PowerShell uses down here, uh, so that would be a nice font to use as well. So we could have modified it to that as well. But at a minimum, that gets us um, a simple, clean GUI. Okay, right. so again, in further videos, we'll, uh, we'll more complicate this, but at a beginning, that gets us a simple GUI that, uh, that we could use here, All right? So it's not the, uh, not the fanciest in the world, okay? Right? Uh, but I will take um, uh, the, the text for this, and I will uh, throw this up to... Um, um, uh, one of my one of my uh, folders up in my Azure storage account 
Uh, so if anybody wants to download the code for this, I know this is not fancy at all, uh, but it is a beginning point uh, using uh, the free tools that I had mentioned. So Visual Studio Community Edition and the, can't remember the name of it right now. Oh yeah, the convert form module uh, that we could get for free out of GitHub here. Use that, modify the uh, the finished PowerShell form as you just saw me do, and you're in the beginning here of having a graphical based script. All right. So again, um, I will post another video uh, on how to do this. If you're not, let's say, comfortable with this person's module here, uh, there is another way we can use this uh, using Windows Process Framework (WPF). Um, again, using Visual Studio as well. All right, so I'll put that up there, uh, that video coming up, that'll be a method too. Uh, but this is again, a way to start here. So I, I prefer this way myself. I like using the Windows Forms library. Uh, it does become very handy, very useful. So it's what I usually like to do. Uh, so if anybody has any comments, uh, please let me know. Um, if you enjoyed this, again, be, uh, be on the lookout here. This is gonna be uh, the beginning part of a series of videos where I'm going to be putting together uh, graphical forms uh, using or doing different administrative tasks. So if you like that, make sure you tune in here. That'll be coming up in the next uh, next little while. And uh, like I said, if you enjoy the content, please consider throwing me a, throwing me a like and a subscribe. Greatly appreciated. Uh, and comments are welcome as well. So, uh, so with that, thank you. And Stay tuned for uh, Method 2 coming up in a upcoming future video. So thanks for watching, everybody.